Recep Tayyip Erdogan has dominated Turkish politics for more than two decades, serving as both Prime Minister and President of Turkey. The veteran leader is a polarizing figure in the country. His supporters see him as a strong man who has overseen significant economic growth and expanded Turkey's influence on the global stage. But his opponents have criticized him for his increasing authoritarian tendencies and human rights record. Here's a look back at Erdogan's rise to power and how he became one of Turkey's most influential leaders. Born in 1954 on Turkey's Black Sea coast, Erdogan was the youngest of five and grew up in the working class Kasim Pasha neighborhood of Istanbul. The young Erdogan was known for his football skills, but he also frequently spoke about the discrimination he faced growing up as a devout Muslim in a secular society. The Turkish leader attended an Imam Hatib school, or a religious school, and during his high school years, he was known as a fiery orator in the cause of political Islam. In 1978, he studied management at Istanbul's Mamara University, where he met Necmettin Erbakar who went on to become the country's first Islamist prime minister. After the 1980 Turkish military coup, Erdogan followed his mentor Erbaka into the welfare party. He was elected to parliament in 1991, but was banned from taking a seat as the Islamic party violated the separation of religion and state. Despite this setback, Erdogan quickly rose through the party's ranks eventually becoming the mayor of Istanbul in 1994 and prioritizing environmental issues. His pragmatic approach won the hearts of many Istanbulites who saw him as a non-corrupt leader. But Erdogan's critics accused him of promoting an Islamist agenda by banning alcohol in city cafes and appealing to devout Muslim conservatives. In 1999, his mayoral term was cut short when he was arrested and imprisoned for reciting a nationalist poem that was deemed inflammatory by Turkish authorities. The poem's lines included, the mosque are our barracks, the domes are helmets, the minarets are bayonets, and the faithful are soldiers. After serving four months in jail, Erdogan returned to politics and in 2001 established the AKP, or Justice and Development Party, with Abdullah Gul. The party, with its roots in Islamism, won a parliamentary majority in 2002, leading to Erdogan's appointment as Prime Minister in 2003. Starting in 2003, he served as the Prime Minister for three terms, during which time he saw a period of consistent economic growth, implemented significant infrastructure projects, and was internationally recognised for his reform efforts. This resulted in the revelation of millions from poverty. He also moved to lift a ban on women wearing headscarves in public services and supported the rights of Turks to express their religion more openly. Erdogan's AKP party managed to bring the Turkish military, which had previously toppled four governments since 1960, under control. In 2005, Turkey began negotiations to join the European Union. Western allies had initially seen Turkey as a hopeful combination of Islam and democracy that could inspire other Middle Eastern nations fighting autocracy and economic stagnation. But his push for greater powers polarized the country and alarmed international partners. In 2013, protesters took to the streets in opposition to his plans to transform a beloved park in Istanbul and his increasing powers. The Gezi Park protests marked a turning point in his leadership, with opponents viewing him as a religious autocrat rather than a democratic leader. During this time, political differences started forming between long-term allies. Ahmed Davutoglu was one of Erdogan's closest allies and served as prime minister in 2014. Davutoglu's softer approach to foreign policy, which looked to improve relations with Turkey's neighbours, including Greece and Armenia, often conflicted with Erdogan's more confrontational stance. As Erdogan consolidated his power within the AKP, tensions between the two increased. In 2016, Dovatolu resigned, citing disagreements with Erdogan over issues such as the Kurdish conflict, 
suppress freedom and plans to change the constitution. On the 15th of July 2016, military jets were witnessed flying over Ankara and helicopters bombed the police headquarters in Golbasi. Erdogan faced a major threat to power, the bloodiest coup attempt in Turkey's political history. A faction of the Turkish armed forces tried to overthrow the president by taking over state institutions in major cities, but the plotters failed to maintain and control mass media. And so ordinary citizens, as well as police forces and soldiers loyal to the government, resisted the attempt to take over. Erdogan, who was on vacation at the time, famously addressed the nation via FaceTime on live TV. The coup attempt left hundreds dead and thousands injured. Erdogan blamed Fatullah Gulen, a Muslim cleric living in self-imposed exile in Pennsylvania, for orchestrating the coup. In the next few weeks, 150,000 public servants were sacked and more than 50,000 people were detained, including journalists, lawyers and academics. The coup attempt paved the way for the 2017 referendum, which would change the constitution, replacing the parliamentary system with an executive presidency. Erdogan narrowly won the referendum, expanding his presidential powers and potentially extending his time in office until 2029. In 2019, the AKP suffered defeats in local elections. The losses in the three largest cities, Istanbul, Ankara and Izmir, tested Erdogan's grip on power. A huge blow to Erdogan was the loss of Istanbul mayorship. Former Prime Minister Bin Ali Yildirim was picked by the AKP against the CHP's Ikrim Imamoglu, but Yildirim lost by a landslide. Today, as Turkey grapples with an economic crisis and the aftermath of a deadly earthquake, the country is more polarised than ever. On the 14th of May, Erdogan faces his biggest challenge yet, as Turkish voters head to the polls to elect a new president. Polls indicate that it will be a tight race between him and CHP leader Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. Could this be the end to Erdogan's two decades in power? <laughs>